Good morning, Monarchs. It's so great to see you all here back at Old Dominion University. Uh, we are so glad to tell you, we're so glad to see you this morning, and we're so glad to tell you that in just a few minutes, we'll hear from the ninth president of Old Dominion University, Dr. Brian O. Hemphill. But first, a special monarch welcome to three regional leaders who are great friends of Old Dominion University. Dr. Kenneth Cooper Alexander is not only an alumnus of Old Dominion, he is the mayor of Norfolk as well. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Dr. Chip Filer spent more than 20 years at Old Dominion University teaching and leading the Institute for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. His research and work on flood mitigation and economic forecasting made him a terrific choice to become the city manager of Norfolk three years ago. Welcome back to campus, Dr. Filer. And we're so glad to have back with us another alumnus of Old Dominion University. Aubrey Lane served in cabinet positions for governors from both parties. That is an extraordinary feat. Today, he serves as Sentara Healthcare's senior corporate vice president and chief of staff. Welcome back to campus, Mr. Lane. On your way out today, do please pick up a copy of the President's Report at the conclusion of our address. And now it is my great pleasure to present to you the President of Old Dominion University, Dr. Brian O. Hemphill. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the State of the University. As we join together for the beginning of a new academic year, I'm pleased to report that the State of the University is strong, strong and poised for another banner year that will define our institution in profound and lasting ways for many years to come. The State of the University is an annual event that provides an opportunity to reflect on our past, celebrate our present, and really look at our bold and promising future. Without question, Old Dominion University has a rich history of research, teaching, and service. Our significant impact on campus and in the community is the very foundation of our important work and our proven success. Now, with unparalleled commitment to serving the Commonwealth of Virginia, local communities, and our incredible students, they are truly transformed by their monarch experience. Indeed, our campus community is special due to the people that devote their time, talent, and treasure to our mission and our vision. As such, I'm pleased to acknowledge a few of these critical groups that are with us today. Let's begin with members of the Old Dominion University Board of Visitors, my bosses who are in attendance. These individuals are strong advocates and true supporters of this university. They're all accomplished in their own rights and spend their precious time ensuring that future monarchs have even greater opportunities to continue our storied history and lasting legacy of transformational excellence. When I call your name, please stand and remain standing. Bruce Bradley, Murray Pitts, Yvonne Allman, Rob Borman, Jerry Deseski, Dennis Elmer, Rudy Middleton, Elza Mitchum, Ross Mugler, and Armistead Williams. Please join me in giving my bosses a hearty round of applause. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Please be seated. In addition to the Board of Visitors, Old Dominion is honored to have the service and support of several volunteer organizations, including the Alumni Association Board of Directors, the Athletic Foundation Board of Trustees, the Barry Art Museum Board of Directors, the Education Foundation Board of Trustees, the Real Estate Foundation Board of Trustees, the Research Foundation Board of Trustees, and our College Advisory Boards. Members of these boards who are in attendance, please stand so that we can acknowledge your tireless efforts. Please stand. Let's give these folks a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, every university 
has a senior leadership team which provides unwavering support to ensure seamless operations while also boldly advancing the institution. This talented team here at ODU is second to none and includes a broad range of administrators who are experts in their given areas and proud champions of our institution. At this time, I'd like to ask the members of the Leadership Council to please stand. Please join me in recognizing this dedicated group of individuals who truly provide so much work for this monarch nation. Let's give them a round of applause. Please be seated. Recent advancements in our academic and research mission were made possible due to the dedicated efforts and hard work of our world-class faculty. Our faculty are well represented in institutional matters through a governance model that is successful due to the engagement of our faculty senate, which is led by its chair, Dr. Michael Carhart. At this time, I would like to ask Dr. Carhart and members of the faculty senate executive committee who are in attendance to please stand. Let's recognize them. Thank you. I must just add really quickly, they're so devoted, their steady leadership, their strong advocacy, and their selfless service. One more round of applause. Thank you. Old Dominion is also honored to continue its strong legacy of being a student-centered institution. We're fully invested in the success of our talented students. Our student body is fortunate to be represented by Student Government Association President Zaria Gassaway and her talented cabinet. Zaria and members of your team in attendance, please stand and be recognized by your ODU family for your commitment. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. And last but certainly not least, I would like to acknowledge my lovely wife and your first lady, Dr. Maricela Rosas Hemphill. She cares deeply for others and gives so much of her time to both encourage and support fellow monarchs. Maricela, please stand and be recognized for all that you do for this great university. <laughs> On September 12, 1930, the Norfolk Division of the College of William & Mary opened its doors in the old Larchmont School Building. And today, just 10 days shy of another celebration of our historic founding, Old Dominion University now stands as an academic, cultural, and research cornerstone of Hampton Roads. This institution and our campus are vastly different from our humble beginnings. For many years, ODU has consistently been focused on the engagement and success of our students, as well as making an impact on the region the Commonwealth of Virginia and beyond. These are defining hallmarks of our powerful legacy and will continue to propel us as we move forward together. Now, as we reflect on the past, one of our most significant accomplishments was the manner in which this campus supported each other on a journey in returning to in-person engagement and operations following the COVID-19 global health pandemic. Throughout the pandemic, we had a team fully dedicated to the COVID-19 planning and response. That team, which was led by Dr. Don Stansberry, provided guidance, insight, and support to the entire campus. Don and members of the team, please stand and remain standing. Don and members of the team. Also, we must acknowledge a few groups that truly went above and beyond in times of uncertainty. Could I ask representatives of the School of Medical Diagnostic and Translational Sciences who operated the COVID-19 testing lab to please stand and remain standing? <laughs> These individuals carried out over 19,000 COVID tests during the past academic year with very rapid turnaround times to keep the university safe for our students, faculty, and staff. And could I also ask all of the employees within student health services, risk management, and housekeeping, just to name a few, to please stand. One second. Where are our housekeepers? Where are they? Excellent. Excellent. I want you to know that that all of these individuals standing were instrumental in successfully navigating the Delta variant surge in 2021 and the Omicron variant surge in early 2022. Let's give these dedicated individuals a hearty round of applause for the power of partnership and their commitment to getting us through the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you.
Now, with the power of partnership on our minds, this past year, campus stakeholders have been engaged in a comprehensive process to develop a five-year strategic plan, which will determine the short-term focus and long-term success of our institution. Nearly 300 individuals have been serving on 12 groups. Now, while a majority of these groups have completed their work, the steering committee, the budget team, and the writing team will continue their worthwhile efforts. We are nearing completion of the draft plan for presentation to the Board of Visitors in just two short weeks. A final plan will be presented to the Board for formal consideration in December. Now, through embracing a culture of innovation across a total of 31 goals and 102 strategies in seven focal areas, the future has boundless possibilities. With an anticipated January of 2023 implementation, I am pleased to announce that the plan will be titled Forward Focus, where innovation meets possibilities. The title is a reflection of the bold and innovative goals and strategies that were brought forth by those directly involved in the planning process. Now, please know that every member on campus will have a voice as we prepare to share the draft plan via a 30-day comment period. At this time, I would like to ask Dr. Austin Ago, and Dr. Suzanne Wright, as well as members of the strategic planning groups to please stand and remain standing. One second, one second, one second. The individuals, all 300 of you, those that were involved, please stand. The individuals standing before you really gave so much of their time to think and rethink about the possibilities for our institution. As they work to enter the final stages, it creates great excitement and opportunity for current and future monarchs. Please join me in giving them a hearty round of applause. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, in addition to our broader planning efforts, there are two groups that stepped forward this past year to provide a detailed review and thoughtful recommendations around two critical areas for our campus, the Branding, Marketing, and Communications Task Force, co-chaired by Dr. Payne, as well as Ashley Shoemaker, began their work last fall and completed their report in November and the ODU Online Task Force, co-chaired by Dr. Morris Foster and Dr. Helen Crumpton, began their work last fall and completed their report in January of this year. Now, their analysis and recommended actions will come to life under the leadership of two vice presidents, Jamie Hunt in University Communication and Nina rodriguez Gonzer in Digital Learning. Could I ask the co-chairs of both groups, our inaugural vice presidents, and individuals who served on both task force to please stand, Let's give them all a hearty round of applause. Thank them for their leadership. Thank you, guys. This past year was certainly a time when Monarch stepped forward and answered the call to serve. And today, I'm pleased to share that universities' administrative and professional faculty have joined together to establish an AP Faculty Senate. The framework for this level of advocacy and support was created under the leadership of September Sanderlin and with the support of Dr. Velika Gatlin. Could I ask both of these individuals to stand along with the committee members who were instrumental in planning the AP Faculty Senate? I want to thank you for your willingness to represent your colleagues in a manner that advances this institution. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, perhaps one of the most significant highlights of this past year in addition to our great work on the strategic plan, was, was really moving forward and in, in looking at how we were going to advance forward with our research. In earning the prestigious Research One status by the Carnegie Classification of Institutions of Higher Education was a significant highlight for this institution, and we're certainly proud of it. <laughs> Old Dominion University is now recognized as one of the nation's top research institutions. We are one of only 146 in the country recognized as the highest level of academic research activity. This prestigious recognition was made possible due to the researchers, faculty, and administrators who are proud to make ODU a hub of knowledge and discovery. This is truly a significant accomplishment and will forever change the future possibilities of our institution and our students. We are truly committed to moving up among our R1 counterparts with a bold and aggressive agenda across all areas of research with a special emphasis on maritime, coastal resiliency, offshore wind energy, data science, cybersecurity, autonomous systems, and healthcare, just to name a few. Could I ask Dr. Morris Foster 
and all of our researchers in attendance today and team members within the Office of Research to please stand. Let's applaud them for their collective success and individual expertise. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, while much of our research enterprise is housed within our academic colleges, there's a special place that has proven its importance for ODU. Just last month, ODU joined with local, regional, state, federal, and industry leaders at VMAS. 25 years ago, VMAS was established as a direct result of a close collaboration between the U.S. Department of Defense and the Commonwealth of Virginia. Now, the overarching goal was to create an academic center of excellence in modeling and simulation to support critical research. Now, 25 years later, that mission has been accomplished, as VMAS is one of the most productive research units at ODU, supporting over 100 research faculty, scientists, technical professionals, and students. Now, I've to toured VMAS twice, and I continue to be impressed with their research from drones to digital shipbuilding but also having the opportunity to watch my amazing chief of staff crash a jet, virtually of course, <laughs> on multiple occasions, truly impressive. <laughs> At this time, I would like to ask Dr. Foster and Dr. Weissel and VMAS team members, both past and present, in attendance to please stand. Please join me in applauding these accomplished individuals for a job well done. <laughs> Thank you, please be seated. Now at ODU, there's a great amount of synergy between our research efforts and our academic program offerings. Look no further than our School of Cybersecurity, which was established in 2015 with just 11 students and has grown into a thriving academic unit serving more than 1,100 students. Over that same time, cybersecurity has generated more than $20 million in research grant awards. Recently, the bachelor's degree in the School of Cybersecurity received the prestigious designation as a National Security Agency Center for Academic Excellence in Cyber Defense. The resounding success of the School of Cybersecurity stems from its unwavering commitment to balancing research, student success, and service. Reflecting this commitment, in attendance are 13 cybersecurity students who will be inducted into the ODU Cyber Leaders Program later today. Supported by a $3.9 million National Science Foundation project, these students receive full scholarships, stipends, and professional development in exchange for agreeing to work for the federal government for a set amount of time after graduation. These are the monarchs who will be protecting our cyberspace well into the future. At this time, I would like to ask our cyber leaders and their family members who have joined them here today to please stand. Let's applaud them for their success and all that they will accomplish into the future. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, with the proven results of our cybersecurity program as a guiding framework, this summer we announced a new school of supply chain, logistics, and maritime operation. With anticipated approval by the school with CHEV in the fall, we're looking forward to building greater synergy across campus and expanding existing relationships with our industry partners. This is a growing area for the local economy and has the ability to provide an immediate and lasting impact for our institution and the region. And today, I'm pleased to announce that we're in the final stages of a proposal submission to CHEV for the establishment of a school of data science. Now, this school will be made possible through a unique partnership with Jefferson Lab and NASA Langley, in which data science researchers from these national labs will have ODU faculty status, and in turn, ODU faculty and students will have special access to these national labs. This is truly a win-win for ODU and our partners. Additionally, it's important that when you think about what we've done at this institution, we've led in this region for many years. In recent years, we have averaged annual enrollments of more than 2,000 students in data science and nearly 400 graduates per year. At this time, I would like to ask Dr. Brian Payne to stand and be recognized for his visionary leadership in the careful planning of these important initiatives. And I would also like to ask our faculty in cybersecurity, maritime, supply chain, logistics, maritime operations, and data science to join Dr. Payne. Let's applaud these individuals for embracing interdisciplinary initiatives that break down silos, increase engagement, and maximize outcomes. Let's give them a round of applause.
Thank you. With our R1 status, the 25th anniversary of VMAS, and concentrated academic programming efforts, now it's time for us to acknowledge the excellence and prominence that our world-class faculty and researchers bring to ODU. International prominence, if we want to state it more clearly. In total, ODU faculty and students have earned 88 Fulbright Awards, including 60 Scholar Awards, 17 Specialist Awards, and 11 Student Scholarships. Additionally, we've hosted 18 foreign Fulbright faculty members and 72 foreign Fulbright students who earn master's and doctoral degrees right here at ODU. Our newest awards include six faculty members who have been selected as Fulbright scholars to study overseas with one being recognized as a Fulbright scholar alumni ambassador. Dr. Chazon in the Darton College of Education and Professional Studies will spend time in Romania to raise awareness for applied behavior analysis and effective intervention for children with autism spectrum disorder. Dr. Fish in the College of Arts and Letters was named to the Fulbright Senior Specialist roster. Dr. Richmond, also in the College of Arts and Letters, was named to the Fulbright Specialist roster. Dr. Time in the College of Arts and Letters will research how disputes are mediated outside of the courts at the grassroots level in Kenya. And Dr. Wang in the Batten College of Engineering and Technology will conduct environmental-based research in Australia for four months starting in January. And Dr. Gray in the School of Nursing has been selected as a Fulbright Scholar Ambassador. Dr. Chazon, Fish, Richmond, Time, Wang, and Gray, please stand so that we can acknowledge your incredible work. Thank you. Now today, I'm pleased to announce the first phase of a multi-year effort to increase stipend levels for our graduate assistants. Previously, master students with teaching assistant duties were provided a $10,000 stipend for their work to engage in both teaching and research functions on campus. And with the start of this semester, graduate assistants will now receive a $15,000 stipend, which will allow them to be more focused on their studies and contributions to our academic and research communities. Additionally, stipends for our doctoral students have been increased from 15,000 to 20,000 effective immediately. I think that deserves a round of applause. The success of our students is at the heart of our work on this campus and in the community. And without question, our talented students are excelling both in the classroom and in athletic competition. And I'm feeling good. I feel yes! It's good! Touchdown! Old Dominion! Old Dominion! Stuns 13th rate Virginia Tech. Welcome to a new era in ODU athletics and go Monarchs. Our 494 student athletes average a GPA of 3.2, a department record with 97 student athletes having a perfect 4.0. Let's applaud their academic achievement of our student athletes. Now, during the most recent year, we were honored to have two championship teams. For the first time in ODU women's soccer history, they won both the regular season and conference tournament. And with an appearance in the NCAA tournament, they nearly beat number one seeded Duke. 
Although they fell short on the scoreboard in the final seconds, they played their hearts out and represented ODU with a great deal of passion, pride, spirit, and strength. Coach Angie Hyde and members of the women's soccer team, please stand so that we can applaud you for a job well done. Please be seated. We're equally proud of Coach Dominic Manila and the ODU women's tennis team for a remarkable season, which ended in a championship victory and multiple NCAA appearances. Without question, the women's tennis team excelled at the individual and collective levels with recognition by the Women's Intercollegiate Tennis Association, multiple scholar athlete awards, and all academic team designation. Members of the tennis team, Please stand and allow us to share in the excitement of another great season and certainly one to remember. Please stand. Thank you. Please be seated. On July 1st, 2022, we entered a new era in ODU athletics with our membership in the Sunbelt Conference. Pretty good. For ODU, the conference movement was always about providing the very best experience for our student athletes as well as our fans. We were honored to join the Sun Belt and look forward to a great deal of collaboration and competition in our inaugural season and beyond. Dr. Wood Selick did an outstanding job as our athletic director as we navigated some choppy waters. Wood, please stand and be applauded for your great work. Great appreciation. Appreciate you. In addition to our new conference, we're making advancements in our athletic facilities. Thanks to generous donors, we're embarking on a major project to enhance and expand our baseball stadium. Our baseball team has an incredible history, and soon it will have a state-of-the-art facility to showcase its talent. As an aside, I learned early on that our alumni and donors were upset that ODU could not host the first round of the NCAA tournament in 2021 and had to travel to the University of South Carolina. Now, mind you, I was not officially president when I started receiving complaints about the situation. <laughs> but in that moment, I learned about the passion of monarchs. The baseball supporters and alumni went to work. As several donors stepped forward to make this project a reality, I want to pay tribute to a very special man, Dennis Elmer, who is a staple in Hampton Roads. Dennis has led Priority Automotive to a thriving business in multiple states. But perhaps what has defined Dennis is his love for others and his desire to create change and opportunity as far and as wide as possible. As a result, ODU is honored that the expanded facility will be known as the Elmer Family Baseball Complex. Dennis, please stand and allow us to share our sincere appreciation and incredible gratitude for your generosity. Thank you. This summer, ODU Athletics was in the national spotlight as women's basketball head coach, Delisha Milton-Jones, secured her spot in the history books. The winner of the 1997 Wade Trophy when she played at Florida, two WNBA championships, two Olympic gold medals, two FIBA world championships, and being selected as a WNBA All-Star three times, Coach Milton-Jones entered the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame surrounded by loved ones. Coach, please stand as we honor your legendary career and your true love of the game. Now, Old Dominion University is truly a place where students find their passion. That pursuit would not be possible without access to state-of-the-art facilities that create learning environments that is second to none. Currently, the Health Sciences Building is under construction. This capital project of more than 76 million is taking shape with substantial completion scheduled for the summer of 2023. Now, we are excited for the future possibilities for our students and faculty in the School of Dental Hygiene, School of Rehabilitation Sciences, and our School of Medical Diagnostic and Translational Sciences, which will occupy this three-story building. And just this past legislative session, we were able to secure 
$188 million in project funding for our new biology building. With more, yeah. With more than 160,000 square feet across five floors, this much needed building is slated for completion in 2026. I would like to take this moment to applaud individuals affiliated with government relations and our facilities work, Annie Gibson, Ashley Shoemaker, Chad Reed, and others involved in these important projects as such as design and capital construction to please stand and be recognized for your advocacy, your planning, and implementation efforts to ensure our campus and our facilities remain on the cutting edge. Please stand. Thank you. Now, in the months and years to come, we will continue to advocate for the infrastructure needs in order to accommodate for our growing focus on data science and our long history and celebrated work within the arts. Those are two important projects that are in our future. As we look to the future, there's much excitement and opportunity on the horizon for our campus, our community, and the Commonwealth. One of those exciting initiatives is our expanded work with Eastern Virginia Medical School and our deepening partnership with Centera Healthcare and other critical partners. Since last summer, we've been meeting to explore the establishment of an academic health sciences center. Separately, ODU and EVMS have storied histories with impactful legacies in the city of Norfolk, Hampton Roads, and the Commonwealth of Virginia. Collectively, we have stepped forward to publicly make a clear statement to address the alarming health disparities facing our region and its people. While much work lies ahead, the goal of the proposed integration are multifaceted and include becoming a nationally recognized leader and hub of excellence for diagnostic validation, clinical translation, and community-engaged population health research. A strategic integration between EVMS and ODU would result in an academic health sciences center that offers the highest number of academic programs and the largest enrollment in health sciences in the Commonwealth of Virginia. By coming together, we can and will enable greater educational opportunities for current and future students through coordination between health science programs and other academic areas. In addition, ODU's recent designation as a Research One institution makes the integration an opportunity to further drive research and innovation. Meanwhile, EVMS has its own storied history of winning highly competitive grants and funding through prestigious entities such as NIH. An academic, clinical, and research partnership among ODU and EVMS presents exciting opportunities for collaboration and scholarship. A specialized focus on research and STEM education presents economic benefits for the Commonwealth of Virginia by driving the local economy in Hampton Roads, which already makes up 20% of all economic activity in the state. The proposed integration will strengthen and grow the workforce pipeline in Hampton Roads, which will in turn create an economic impact of $4.9 billion for Virginia. And in turn, we will be better equipped to address health disparities in Hampton Roads and Virginia as a whole. At this time, I would like to acknowledge Dr. Alfred Abu Hamid, who proudly serves as President, Provost, and Dean of EVMS. Dr. Abu Hamid has a proven history of success and partnership at EVMS dating back 30 years. And throughout this work, Dr. Abu Hamid has become a close colleague and true partner. Alfred, please stand and remain standing. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in providing a warm monarch welcome to my friend, Alfred Abraham. Thank you. Complex and important work of this magnitude cannot be accomplished without the sheer dedication and hard work of many. At this time, I would like to recognize members of the initial vision and strategy groups as well as the nine functional teams that are now working and will continue to engage over the academic year in our robust planning and implementation efforts. Please stand and be recognized for all that you have done and all that you will continue to do to bring this vision to reality. Please stand, all of our teams. As I began, the state of the university is strong. We're strong, Monarch strong. This family, our ODU family of students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends 
have engaged in unbelievable efforts to push ourselves and each other beyond what we thought was possible. The truth is, our possibilities are endless. Why? Because each and every person in this room and so many others have the desire and drive to turn challenges into change and obstacles into opportunities. I have no doubt that monarchs across the world will be proud to see the future success of Old Dominion University and be honored to play a vital role in making it possible. As monarchs, we are genuine in our efforts and we're grounded in our work. As our campus, our communities, and the Commonwealth are counting on us, we're poised and prepared to proudly demonstrate our individual abilities and our collective strengths each and every day. Our mission is worthwhile, our vision is clear, and our future is now. Thank you. Go Monarchs. Thank you. <laughs>